The challenge really is to strike the right balance between oversight and not stifling innovation. Do you think that you're striking that right balance? I think we are, but I think we can we can go further. I mean, the central bank has been engaged. Um, it, there, it has had an innovation hub since 2018. Mm. It has been trying to engage. I mean, it's a challenge for central banks to be able to regulate and also keep pace with development, with digital development and understanding what's happening and where that, has, where that can go. And what we want the central bank to do and what it is already doing, and the sandbox is another step on this, we want the central bank to work in conjunction with industry to help understand it's not to say that they're holding hands or that it's changing the standard of regulation, not at all. They will still do that job very well. But it's just about just shifting the nuance ever so slightly to make sure that everybody is keep pace together. And so, as you say, that any sort of divergence there isn't, in fact, stifling innovation. Because, you know, the, the opportunities for myself as a public representative, for citizens of Ireland, for citizens globally, to be able to use faster, better digital tools to be able to make payments and a whole range of other things, that's what we want. But it has to be within a regulated, safe system. You highlighted there the anti-money laundering authority for example right. that we're that we're going for and there's an example of the importance of financial services the importance of technology how those things interact the juxtaposition of those things to be able to do a job really well i mean the headlines here this week were what we you know what's the role for ai in money laundering and, and protecting against money laundering we're hosting we're, we're bidding to host the anti-money laundering authority this is going to be a pan-european regulatory system where we're totally integrating the asset recovery teams the police force the the compliance pieces totally regulating un under a single authority and making it really strong. Yes. Yeah. And uh, let, let me bring in crypto assets here because there is a perception that it is almost aiding and abetting money laundering. And you, you've seen the collapse of FTX, clearly an opportunity for a better regulation of crypto assets. Is developing a crypto ecosystem part of the plan for Ireland? Well, there is, regula there is European regulation in relation to crypto assets, you know, so, so we have gone that step. I mean, your choices with crypto are what? Ignore it, ban it, or regulate it. And obviously, I think regulating it is probably the most sensible thing, and we are doing that on a European basis. But, you know, money laundering is, is extraordinary. I mean, it can happen through golf clubs. It can happen through funeral homes. People are more and more creative. And we have to make sure that the focus all the time is not just, yes, you have to to achieve compliance, but we have to be focusing on risk. And we'll keep talking about money laundering and forgetting what we're talking about. We're talking about terrorist financing. We're talking about the profits of crime. We're talking about the profits of human trafficking. And when you bring it back to the social side of, of what this means and why it's so important, I think it gives us an extra impetus, not just to get it right, but to find ways to better protect people against, against this. And I thought it was really interesting at the Singapore FinTech Festival, this focus right. on AI and how AI can help in the battle against money laundering.